Welcome everyone. This, as uh, Craig mentioned, this is my talk, Learning with Microsoft Learn. Uh, learn how to access free exam crams, hands-on labs, and Azure sandboxes. My name is David E. Patrick. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, certified solution developer, a uh, Microsoft certified, <laughs> it's too many letters. Uh, I'm an MVP. I've taken a lot of Microsoft exams. And one of the things we'll talk about during this talk is how to prepare for Microsoft exams using Microsoft Learn. So um, I'm coming up, I think, on 86 exams passed, Microsoft exams passed. So uh, I'm a bit of an exam junkie. That's why I've got all those letters. I work for a company called Data Systems Analyst, dsainc.com. We're always looking for good people. If you want to look at some of our jobs, check out tinyur.com slash dsajob. And you can hit me on Twitter. A lot of times I talk really fast. I, I, I throw a lot of information out. And we'll have a few minutes at the end for questions questions and feel free to ask questions using the chat as we go along. But if you think of questions later, it's all, and inevitably people, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes after the, the talk to think of a, a question, you can always tweet me at. I'll also hang out on the Discord channel. So if you do think of questions after the talk, you can either hit me on the Discord or check me out on Twitter at, at David Patrick. So I run a user group. I actually run several user groups, but one that I like to kind of shout out is Mad SharePoint. So I do a lot of SharePoint as well as uh, I'm a C, you know SQL DBA, SQL developer, uh, ASP.NET Web developer, and a lot of SharePoint. Um, so at our SharePoint uh, user group meetings, we talk about all that stuff. So you can either be really excited by SharePoint, you're mad about it, or sometimes it's very frustrating. You can be mad at it. Either way, we welcome you to join our our talks and. Now, uh, we've been doing actually uh, hybrid meetings even before this pandemic hit us. Um, so feel free to go to matchshareport.com, sign up for one of our meetings. We'd like to give away freebies. That's pick some cup pictures of us giving away freebies, uh, even when we were when, when we in person, but even remotely, uh, we love to give away stuff. So check us out there. All right, so let's jump in and talk about Microsoft Learn. Most people think it's just online documentation, but honestly, it's way, way more than that. And so I want to kind of dig into some of the nooks and crannies and talk about what are some of the goodies that you can find on Microsoft Learn. Things like the Azure Quick Starts. These are real short. You can do these on your lunch break uh, just to kind of, and I say Azure, but there's Quick Starts for everything. There's SQL Server Quick Starts. Um, I'm going to go over some of the Azure ones. We'll talk about some of the tutorials, which are longer uh, sort of sort of uh, exercises that you can do, and sometimes they have sort of um, knowledge checks at the end where you can test your knowledge, kind of exam prep questions. There's whole learning paths, and we'll talk about what they are and how you do them. There, I, I the analogy for me. So I teach uh, at a couple of the local universities: University of Maryland, um, Towson University, and. Um, the learning paths to me are like courses at college, and each one of those, each each learning path has different modules, which are like classes that you take as part of the whole course. And some of those modules are actual hands-on labs where you can do things. And we'll talk about creating sandboxes where you can actually have free Azure credit, so you don't have to use your own credit to do some of these hands-on labs. So it's really, really a wealth of information that 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 we're going to go over and, and show off in Microsoft Learn. There's lots of samples to do, sort of soup to nuts. Hey, I want to create a virtual machine and I want to install a web server and then have a website so you can kind of get that, you know, from nothing to something. Um, there's a lot of certification preparation. So uh, uh, Microsoft Learning Pass that are geared towards passing an exam. And I literally just passed my eighth recent exam um, using nothing but Microsoft Learn and my uh, real world experience. So uh, there's a bunch of new exams out there. If you're not familiar with the exams, I'll talk about some of those exams that are out there um, that Microsoft Learn has specific exam crams for. Uh, and then we'll talk about some other the little nooks and crannies like Learn TV. There's this there's, there's this TV channel in Microsoft Learn that you can just turn on if you're, you know, you you kind of just want to put it on the background while you're eating your lunch type of thing and watch different presentations. And I got I was lucky enough to be a part of a couple of different shows where they I got to talk to some Microsoft folks about different trials and tribulations working with this and working with that. Um, so I'll show you where that is in Microsoft Learn. All right. So let's get started by um, talking about uh, uh, Microsoft Learn for Azure. So this, you know, cloud computing and all that. Uh, there's a whole section on that, um, that where it, it includes things like uh, videos from previous conferences, Microsoft at Night, Ignite Video. If you haven't been to Microsoft at Night, it's gone virtual since the pandemic. So one of the silver linings to this whole thing is that before the pandemic, Microsoft at Night was in person. You had to pay $3,000. You had to get on a plane, you know, had to get off work. Now it's all virtual and you can attend for free. So uh, those videos are up here on Microsoft Learn to learn all about Azure or SQL or whatever you want to learn about. There's a whole community, a Microsoft tech community, where you can post questions 
questions and there's people like myself one there trying to you know give you answers then there's these virtual training days these are one or two day events that are live where you can not in person but you're you're remotely and you have a live instructor and you can ask questions in real time and a lot of those events actually end with a free voucher or a discounted voucher to take a microsoft exam so this is a, a you know one of the sites probably the biggest issue i find with microsoft learn is that there's just so much you know where do you get started so in my slide deck which i'll put up later in in the uh, discord i've got all the links so literally any of these slides you can go ahead and click on that link and that will bring up the actual site that i was talking about so i'll just drag this one over here and show what i'm talking about so there's the microsoft learn for azure site that i just mentioned it talks about the different learning paths that you can click on you know fundamentals if you're just getting started um you can uh it gives you not, what I really like about this. It also tells you, you know, who's this directed at, what role, and how long it's going to take. So this one might take me a little longer than my lunch hour. This one, again, I, I, I the analogy is they're like college courses, right? So, and then they're made up of different modules. So, you know, if you wanted to learn how to manage resources in Azure, you could click on this learning path. And it's broken up into six, this particular one, six different modules. So the whole thing is going to take us uh, four and a half hours. But each module, you know, this one's 35 minutes. So I can do that one during one of my lunch breaks. And then this one down here is another 34 minute one. This one's a little more than an hour. But it is, you know, it's all about bite sized chunks. You don't try to do it all at once. You, the, I love how they've broken this, broken the, each one of these down so you can kind of consume them over a period of time. You don't have to try to do everything at once. So. Mention Azure. I realize not everyone might be familiar with Azure, so let me talk a little bit about what Azure is. Azure is, of course, Microsoft's uh, one of Microsoft's cloud computing offerings. Uh, it, as, it allows you to have all sorts of types of services available via the cloud. Things like virtual machines, they call that compute. Um, app services, things like web apps. With app, this is sort of that serverless computing because you're not worried about standing up the machine and, and installing the operating system and all that. It's just I want a web app and I want Azure to support it. And you can use things like .NET and Java and, and, think, and you know, Node and Python and PHP. Um, SQL databases. So there's two kinds. Well, there's more than two kinds, but there, you know, there's the SQL database as a service where you can say I need a SQL server and I'm not worried about a particular version i'm not trying to install an operating system and i don't need that kind of control i just want the service just create the database and load it with data and query that data or there's create a virtual machine install sql server specific version you want more control um so you know you can you, if you if you need the kind of control that you're used to if you're especially if you're coming like from one premises and you you just want to kind of shift and lift um, you could use a virtual machine that's running SQL Server. That's one uh, option. The other option is, hey, I'm going to actually just have SQL Server as a service out there in the cloud. So Azure provides you both of those. Um, also, things like Linux, virtual machines, and then functions. Again, another serverless. I always laugh when I see this, this term serverless because uh, I did a talk for a project management institute bunch of project managers, not very technical. And uh, one of the project managers, when I was talking about Azure, raised their hand and said, so there's no hardware. And I, you know, it's hard to not chuckle at that because there's obviously hardware. There's, you know, there's all these data centers full of blades of, of computing. Um, but serverless means you just don't have to worry about the server, right? You can create a function it runs out there and you're not worried about what machine it's running on or the operating system or anything like that. That's what they mean by serverless. So not only does Azure have all these different types of services, it gives you a ton of templates for creating uh, resources that that provide those services. So uh, a template, it's like if you're going in Word and say, hey, I need to create a new uh, fax. And that's probably a bad analogy. When I was younger, everyone knew what a fax was. Now a lot of my, my students at the universities are like, Facts? What? That, come on, old man. What are you talking about? So, uh, when you go into Word, you can create an invoice, you can create a purchase order. You, you know, there's all these templates. Um, same thing in, in Azure. You can come in here, and when you say, "Hey, I want to create a virtual machine," there's a, a little quick start. Uh, that, and we're going to walk through some of these that will just step by step give you a little graphical user interface to to fill in the blanks and then create that machine. Now, you can also do it using code and PowerShell. And we're going to show some of that as well. But it really, you know, uh, Azure tries to make it really simple to to get started and create these resources using very um, user friendly fill in the blank GUI. And then this is just that overview of Azure services. And this is, and even the slides not, you know, not up to date because it changes daily, I, I think. But there's different compute that you can create, virtual machines being one of my favorites, different kind of networking, uh, different types of data storage, different types of web apps, and on and on and on. 
one of the things that's interesting is if you go back to that template, when you create one of these templates, if you create a SQL database or a virtual machine or whatever, um, a lot of times those templates will create the different pieces that you need to support that resource. So if I create a virtual machine and it, you know, it's not that template's going to create not just the virtual machine, but it's also going to it's also going to create the uh, the virtual network to connect to that virtual machine, or if it's going to be inside of a virtual network, it might create the IP address, the uh, network security group. So all the bits and pieces that support that, these templates will create all them for you. Now you could go create them individually yourself if you if you needed to, but the templates again help you by creating all them for you. And you'll see that when we create one. Another uh, thing I like to talk about in Azure is the fact that that you can group your resources into dashboards. So. When you're getting started with Azure and you've got, um, you know, maybe you're creating a couple of virtual machines to support a certain client, you can create a dashboard for that client. This is my, you know, or that department. Maybe this is my HR department and I'm going to put, you know, this this one virtual machine called DSA1 there. And it also needs to have, you know, a network security group and a virtual network and an IP address. So I'll put that all on one dashboard so it's easily accessible amongst all the different resources I have in my Azure um, uh, directory. So how do we get started? And well, you can sign up for a free trial. If you're working for a larger company, a lot of times there's MSDN subscriptions that are available. So one of my stories I like to tell folks is that um, I've worked for a lot of companies over the last 30 years and at least 10 of them, when I went into the company, I said, hey, do you have any MSDN subscriptions available to assign to your employees? And uh, they would say uh, yes, or we don't know. And in the cases where they didn't know, we would research it, find out they did. And in at least three instances, I then became in charge of them because no one, it's, it's, it's people will sign up for these things either through software assurance or whatever enterprise license agreement, or maybe they're a Microsoft partner and they'll get these MSDN subscriptions and don't realize, you know, what value they have and that they have to be assigned to employees and then the employees can start using them. So if you think you might have them, it doesn't hurt to contact your IT department and say, hey, is this something that's available? You can even get them assigned to you for like 90 days and then they can take away from you and give it to someone else. So if, you know, if, they, if you have like 10 of them um, one can be shared every 90 days you can assign it to someone new so that's a really uh, under understated under you know uh, represented MSD and subscription credits people don't realize that they're out there and really um, should be taken advantage of and the last one because I do teach at a couple different universities student access and we'll talk about how if you're a student if you have a dot edu email address you can sign up to, for Azure and get hundred dollars of free credit using a student account so I'm just gonna walk you through that real quick if you are a student and I know a couple of my students may have logged in today. Um, I see Jason has a comment, signed up for, for a free month of Azure and uploaded my, uh, over the month I noticed the DTs were generating even when I didn't use, yeah, that happens. Cancel the trial uh, and charge you a hundred bucks and wouldn't give it back to you, darn that Microsoft, a nightmare trying to work with their support. Yeah, so so how, is there an easier way, the question Jason is, um, so that without giving them a credit card so they don't make bogus charges? Excellent question, Jason. So if you, I'm gonna talk about, I am gonna answer that. In fact, here we go. So if you sign up for a student account, they will ask you for your information. You do have to have a dot, e, I'm using my daughter as an example here, she signed up for one. Uh, you do have to agree to whatever their stuff is, but you'll notice no credit card required. So this is really nice for students, didn't have to put in a credit card, so there's no possibility that they're going to try to charge you for something that you didn't technically use. Um, they even have this education hub with some learning resources, which or actually Microsoft Learn just pre-packaged or differently packaged for the students. And it's really, really valuable. And you don't have to be a young student. You can be, when I was doing my master's degree, I had a .edu email as part of that. So, you know, you, as long as you have that the, the, the email that can be validated as a student email, you can sign up for this. If you're not a student, that's okay. We have something else for you. Visual Studio Dev Essential. This is a way where you can sign up and get access to a bunch of different resources. And again, all the links are in my slides. So if I were to click on this, it'll actually bring up the, the current offer. And it looks, it's, probably, it's been updated, so it looks a little different than what I have in my slides. But it gives, you can see here, it gives you all the tools, you know, Visual Studio Community, Community for Mac, Visual Studio Code, it gives you access to Pluralsight, which is a great training resource, Code Magazine. Um, Bunch of different two hundred dollars for the first month now this one you got to be careful because this is one of those things that uh, jason mentioned where you um do have to supply your credit card so as you sign up for here um this is just you know, what i just described some of the different things that you get when you sign up they're all free but it will identify you during sign up using your credit card and the reason it does that is that it will ask you for um 
you know, to identify you, and it will provide a cap. So you get that, you get the, uh, what is it, $200 for the first month. And then when that runs out, everything shuts down, unless you remove the credit limit. So as long as you don't remove the credit limit, I've done this multiple times, um, it just turns off all my 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 resources and and then I don't have access to them. Um, but it does, you know, did get the credit card for me. So I got to be careful that I don't remove that that credit limit. If you go with the MSDN subscription, you'll get $150 every month, and uh, the credit limit or the 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 cap is in, again applied. And I've had a lot of those. I'll show you some of the ones I have. And that's again. Um, that's that's what really works and jason yeah you don't have an edu address so i would recommend using this uh dev essentials absolutely if you already have an account can i create a new one via the dev essential route yeah i think you can so like i said i've had several different ones because with the dev essentials it just wants an email address i've actually signed up for you know one using if i had a, a stevenson email address or a maryland email address as long as you have a different email address you can sign up for the for the dev essentials um, you know, it's based on your email address. All right. So when you sign up for one of these, whether it's the student or now the student and the essentials are a little bit different. Um, the, the student, you get $100 for a year. The essentials, you get 200 for the first 30 days. But there's also always free services. So there is a way you can, if you stay under a certain, certain limit, you can use, you know, sort of a, a bare minimum to play around with. And what I'm going to show you later is even with, so if you sign up for one of these free accounts, and even if you're out of credit, you keep that limp, that credit cap on there so you can't be charged, there's uh, sandboxes that you can use where you'll activate another account in your account, another directory in your account, and you'll use that services, and you, it's not tied to your credit card or anything. Now, that does only last for a little while while you do the learning path, but that's another option to kind of use Azure for free. So let's talk about some of these uh, resources. What do you get? Virtual machine wise, there's different sizes and they have different um, instance designations. So D1, D2, and this is just some examples. There's actually a lot more now. They've gotten much more complicated. Um, what you'll notice though, is that they, the, as they go up in size, as they go up in cores and memory and disk space, the price per hour goes up. So you have to be careful. You don't want to fire up a D12 virtual machine for, you know, $485 a month and let it run all month, you'll use up all your credit. What I tend to do as I, I play around with Azure is I'll start up something and then I'll turn it off. Now, uh, Jason was mentioning earlier that with the database, you've got to be really careful because even if you turn it off, you're still getting charged if it's taking up space. And same thing with the virtual machines. If the virtual machines aren't running, but they're still taking up storage space, you're still getting charged a certain amount. So you, you really uh, have to kind of manage what, you, what you're using, especially if you're trying to stand under a certain amount of free credit. And we'll talk more about that when I do some of the demos. So let's get into one of these demos. Let's look at um, creating, how would you create a virtual machine? And we're going to use Microsoft Learn to show us how to do that. Quick question. So there's no way to get these free without getting a credit card? Um, well, well, you could, student, if, you're, if, you, if you sign up as a student, uh, the Dev Essentials does want the credit card. But again, if I've got several of them that I've never been charged because I've never removed the, the cap. Um, and then MSDN is another way to get them free without a credit card, but you do have, your company would have to have that. And that's not really free because they, they you know, the MSDN subscriptions really come with either a software license or enterprise license or, or something like that. But if you can get them assigned, you know, if your company can assign you one, then it's free to you. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into this. Let's create our first virtual machine and we're going to use Microsoft Learn. You'll see here in this particular portion of Microsoft Learn, they give us a couple different options. We're going to use one of the quick starts, which is, yeah, it is a bummer. Sorry, Jason. Um, uh, you can you can create a virtual machine using the portal, the, the graphical user interface. You can create one using PowerShell. You can create one using the Azure command line interface. And then there's also ARM templates. So we're going to do one using the portal, sort of the easiest way. Uh, it took us about two minutes to read through. It's going to take us about 10 minutes to get through it. But basically, it walks us through creating a, vir a Windows virtual machine in Azure. So let me click on this to bring up the actual tutorial. And I'm going to drag this and put it off to the side here like that. And then we're going to walk through the tutorial. So as we walk through here, it says, hey, first thing you do is sign up for a free account. If you open that window up, it talks about the trial and some other options. Um, once you do that, you can open up portal.azure.com. So that link is what's going to take us to the dashboard or, or the portal of Azure. So let me open this in a new window. And we'll drag a little side-by-side -side action here.
Now it automatically, I've already previously logged in. So it's, it's logged me in with one of my accounts. You can see here, I'm logged in with my Hotmail account. That's, I, I'm, that's old school, but yeah. Um, notice there's these, this idea of a directory. You can have different directories attached to your account. So if I actually click on switch directory, you'll see I've got all these other uh, directories that I could connect to. And we'll talk more about that in a minute when we when we set up a sandbox. You can see down here, there's a Microsoft Land, Learn sandbox that I was using earlier. And that's one way that um, I can use a, a, without having to spend any money. So the, the Azure portal, when you get to it, I'll make it big just for a second to show you a little bit around Azure. You, you, this is the home page. You can see different databases I might have created. You can see I have create, I've created, create, created quite a few. You can see other resources like virtual machines. If I go back to the uh, you know, virtual machines, these are all just filtering the different resources to show different types of resources. What else do we have up there? You've got you know machine learning, um, resource groups, all that good stuff. And then you have like recent things I've been working with recently. So I just created a, a database called uh, David D. Patrick. That was the most thing I did 46 minutes ago. So in Azure, you've got this, this home portal, but you also have this idea of dashboards. So over here in the, the little hamburger menu, I clicked on that. I'm going to click on dashboard and that'll take me to some of my dashboards. That's just, again, a way for me to group some of my resources into logical, you know, dashboards. So in this particular one, this is my SharePoint dashboard. You can see I've got some SharePoint virtual machines. I've got one for my uh, my web front end, one for my Active Directory, one for my SQL Server, and they're all stopped. Again, I'm trying to, this is all for development tests, uh, so I don't leave everything running all the time, otherwise it would cost me a lot of money. Um, so I deallocate them, and, and now they're, I mean, it's just a little bit of money for the space, that the storage that they're, but I'm not being charged for compute or bandwidth or anything like that. Um, yeah, in fact, the only thing I've got running on this particular dashboard is my SQL, my uh, SQL database, AdventureWorks, which is online and cost me a little bit of money. Um, as I want, I can switch. I've got other dashboards, and if I switch to one of these other dashboards, you'll see that the resources are changed. So let's switch to say my Visual Studio Enterprise dashboard and see what I put on that one. So switching to a different dashboard, you'll see this one only has a couple of machines. It looks like Visual Studio, an old version of Visual Studio 2015 for supporting some app that needs that particular version, I, I think. Um, if I switch to one of my other ones, I see some other resources. And if I switch to one of my other ones, I see some other resources. So whenever you create resources, if I go back to the, the portal itself, um, this new database, you know, you can pin that to a dashboard, right? I could actually come up here and say, all right, I'm looking at this. This is my, uh, my overview of this particular database. Let's go put this on a dashboard. So I'm clicking the pin and I can say, I want to put it on a private dashboard only that I can see or a dashboard I want to share with other uh, folks that have an active Azure Active Directory, or I could create a, a brand new dashboard. So we'll call this one uh, SQL uh, Saturday. What is this? SDG, I think, right? Uh, 2021 sounds good. Create a new dashboard associated subscription. So whenever you sign up for a trial, it's a, it's given a, a name in Azure, a subscription name. I actually, I mentioned I have several of them. Um, I've got one, Microsoft Imagine, that's my student version. And then I've got a couple from my company and I've got one associated with my MVP account. Notice I've got a couple here that are disabled. That's because I did let the credit ex expire on them. I have a spending ca cap on them. So once I I used up, enough, you know, I did a bunch of demos and ran out of money, they became disabled. So I'm not getting charged, but they're disabled. And that's that's how that goes. So we'll leave it attached to this one and resource group location. This is just whenever you create a resource in Azure, it's going to be in one of the data centers that Microsoft has in East Coast US is one of my closest. So that's my default. Move. But I could put it anywhere. I could put it in India if for some reason that made sense. So we'll just say, uh, uh, create that dashboard there. So now I should have a new dashboard that has one resource, this SQL Server database. So let's go to my dashboards and see that new dashboard. There it is. And it's just got that one resource. So that's dashboards in Azure. All right, so let's go back to our tutorial and follow it. So it says sign into the Azure por por uh, portal, which we've done. So let's go back to the, the main home of the portal. We're gonna create a virtual machines. It tells me to type virtual machines in the search. So we'll do that. We'll come out here to search, we'll put in virtual machines. By the way, there's multiple ways to do this. I'm following the tutorial, but I could have I could have uh, cl clicked create a resource. I could have clicked virtual machine and then vir create virtual machines. So multiple ways, just, I'm, you know, I'm trying to stick to the tutorial here. So we'll go ahead and select 
based on what they're saying here. Uh, the next step is set in, in, in the virtual machines page, add then virtual machine. So the first thing you'll notice is there's no add. So one of the gotchas of Microsoft Learn, I love Microsoft Learn, it's great, but cloud computing changes rapidly and the documentation sometimes can't keep up. So you have to be a little flexible when you're reading through one of these tutorials, understand that even though this one says, um, add the virtual machine, it may, the verbiage might have changed. So in this, in this uh, case, it's create the virtual machine. So uh, sometimes my students will, will, will needle me on that. They'll say, Mr. Patrick, I don't see add anywhere. Yeah, you're right. They, they, they updated it, in the, but they didn't update the documentation. So be, you know, you know, kind of, kind of look around and, and figure out, kind of work with it. In this case, it's create virtual machine. All right. So following the tutorial, we've created a virtual machine. The next step is this GUI. I'm going to, I'm going to just uh, the list of uh, virtual machines. I'm going to kind of push that to the side there. So now we're creating a virtual machine and it's showing me, you know, sort of the what do I need to fill in? What parameters need to be supplied in order to create this virtual machine? So let's go ahead and do that. We got to create uh, and it tells me what to do, right? It says come in here and call uh, my resource group. It says create um, a new resource group. So I'll click create new resource group. I'll give it the name it said to create. Um, it, didn't tell me to select a subscription, but I'll, I'll, I'll let it do the default subscription. Um, under instance details, it wants me to type my VM. Uh, region, it tells me to pick East US. And for some reason, let's see, East, is East US not here? Oh, there it is. Um, okay. And then what else they want? No infrastructure. Uh, so, the tutorials typically will, unless it's trying to demonstrate high availability or, and, and you know data redundancy, data fault tolerance, that kind of thing, um, will typically try to choose the options that use the less, least amount of credit. So you know by using no infrastructure redundancy, this will be a very cheap uh, demo. It won't use a lot of credits. Um, image would image they tell us to use the Windows Server 2019 Data Center one. If you guys, you know, I'll zoom in to show you. So that image to see, is that available? Uh, there it is. Yep. Okay. Um, size DS21. So earlier we saw like D124, but you, as I mentioned, they're a little more complicated now. So DS1 version 2. What do we have here? We have D4. So let's see all the sizes. Oh, there's, there's DS1. Uh, if I can't, if I couldn't have f found the size, you can click see all sizes. Then you can really scroll down and, and you know, figure out which one you really need. But there it is. I think that's the right one. Yep. Okay. You can even get, see it's telling us how much about, you know, about 53. If I left this running all time, it'd be about 50 bucks a month. Um, which if I was using one of my MSDN subscriptions, I get 150 a month. You know, the, the, with that particular one, I can actually leave some of these running all the time. Uh, administrator account, so we've got a, a supply, and I think they tell me what they tell me to use Azure user. So that's what we'll do. Azure user. Do they tell me to do a certain password? They say make it, you know, acceptably complex. This one is complex enough. Letters and numbers. This is always it's always a struggle. You know, twelve and thirteen. Did I not? Is that not between twelve and thirteen? All right, so they match. It, it matches the complexity requirements. Uh, next thing it tells me to do is, you know, ports. So, you know, from a security standpoint, you know, maybe no ports, but this is just a demo, so we're gonna allow some ports. i will probably, uh, you know, I can allow some web traffic. Maybe I want to be able to remote desktop into it. This is just to get you started. You can once you create this virtual machine, there's a whole um, network security group you can go into, and you can configure all sorts of other different ports. Um, and then finally, you review and create. Uh, oh, the licensing. So if you have a um, existing license and you're kind of you know moving it to the cloud, you can say, hey, I've got an existing one, and that'll use less credit, right? And you have to confirm. I, I solemnly swear I, I have an existing one. Let's see. Is there a question? No, I don't see any questions. Okay, great. Uh, review and create. So now when you, I, and I've jumped over a couple of different things there, which this tutorial is kind of glossing over some of them, but that's okay. Review and create did a couple of things there. It checked everything I entered so far, nothing violated. I didn't like put in a bad password or forget to enter something. So uh, validation passed. It gives me an idea how much this is gonna cost. And um, you know, it makes me agree to everything. It warns me that my RDP is set to be open, which is not recommended for production, but for demos, fine. And gives me a little, you know, 
uh, a summary of some of the other default settings that I kind of glossed over. So I glossed over the, the, the disk tab, the networking tab. The, the tutorial doesn't you know, ask you to change any of those, but sometimes I do like to. In fact, disks, I don't like using the premium disk. This is this is another one that'll cost you a lot of money. So if you're trying, if you if you have a certain amount of credit and you're trying to stay within that credit, I always recommend changing from premium down to standard, especially if this is not production. I'm just playing around. Um, so that that would definitely be a lot less expensive. You use your credits a lot, uh, you know, not as fast. So standard is one thing I like to do. Uh, what else do I like to do? I think that's really networking's fine, management's fine. Um, with management, I do, I do, again, this is not in the tutorial, but I do like to make sure that there's an auto shutdown so that if I forget to shut something down, especially knowing this is a demo machine, um, you know, at 7 p.m., I know I'll probably be done playing with this. So I want, and they, this did not used to be the default. Now it's a default. So this is very helpful that it will auto shut down. So we like that. And it will even let me know that I can stop it. If I am working, it'll, it'll shoot me an email. So I can say, no, don't shut it down. Uh, but that all looks good. So we'll go back to review and create. Now, we did this through the GUI, but there is an option. If I knew that I needed to do this over and over again, you can download a template and that will allow you to use code to basically take all your um, parameters and, and script it out. So you can see here, they even give you, hey, do you want to do this in PowerShell? Do you want to use it in the cloud, uh, the command line interface? It shows you some JSON, JavaScript object notation with all the different parameters that you, that you used and then uh, you know, these are the actual templates. So if I wanted to, I could download all these and then I could deploy them later so I wouldn't have to go through all the windows again. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to just use the GUI and say create. And now it's been submitted for deployment. You can see up there, deployment's in progress. And it takes a few minutes for Microsoft to receive the, the job. It's running in the background and it'll sit there and it'll, it'll, it'll notify me once it's done. And then once it is done, you can go to that. Now I've done I've done one already. I like Martha Stewart. I had baked one earlier. So let me go back to our the home and go to my virtual machines. And I'll show you the one I did earlier. So what is the one I did earlier? What did I call it? That's uh, should be running. So if I focus, if I change, there we go. So this is the one, uh, or just one we just did. It's just done already. Look at that. Okay. Um, but I know it's the one you know because it's running. So let's go ahead and click on that. And let's connect to it. So the next part of the tutorial says, hey, after you create this virtual machine, maybe you want to connect to it. You can use the remote desktop client to connect to it. It doesn't matter if you're on a Mac or Windows. So if I click connect, it's going to load the remote desktop. Or it's going to allow me to download an RDP file that will uh, open up my remote desktop client. And I'm on Windows, so it's already built in. I'll go ahead and say, yes, I trust this uh, server because it's the one I just created. So I'll go connect to that. Uh, it's going to ask me for my credentials. Now, this is a little tricky because it's popping up with my local credentials. Um, I don't want to use my local credentials, so I'm going to click more choices. I sp I created a uh, what I call I think it was Azure user. So A Z user was the username from the tutorial, and I don't want to use my DSA domain. I want to use my local domain. So I use that little dot slash to just say, hey, use the, you know, I could type the name of the computer, which I forget what I call already called it. But just this is a little cheat to just say, just use whatever machine I'm connecting to. And then whatever password I told it, if I can remember what I did. Yeah, let's do it. It looks like I got it. Da, 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 da. And it looks like I forgot my password already. Let's try one more time. Connect back over here. More choices. Oh, you know what? This this is one I did earlier. I, my bad. I, I think I called it the same name. So if I did this, if this is the one I did earlier, I used a different username. That's why. So let's see. I think the one we just did is still bacon. Yeah, so this is the one I did earlier. I used a different set up a different admin account. Um, it's going to, again, warn me, hey, do you trust this one doesn't have a so I just created this machine, so obviously I trust this. I'm going to say yes. And now it's connecting to remote to that. Uh, 
a remote desktop to that Azure machine that's running in Azure, Azure Virtual Machine, and I can do all sorts of cool stuff. You know, it's it's like I'm sitting in front of a machine if it was down in the server room down the hall. Um, I can install SQL Server on it. I can get to the C drive, anything I, I need to do. Um, it's available. In fact, I think the uh, tutorial has us, let's do this, has us um, creating, oh, bring that back up. The tutorial has us, I'll drag that over here, creating um, what? After we after we do that, they they have us installing the um, virtual machine, right? So we come in, we created the virtual machine, we've connected to it. I'm sorry, installing a web server. So we don't need to do that. But basically, if I wanted to do that, I would just copy the PowerShell script and then go to the local machine and run that. So just come in here, do PowerShell, and install a web server. Um, but you can install whatever you want. You can install SQL Server. I do a lot of times when I fire up one of these virtual machines, I will install. Um, you know, one for a SharePoint web front end, one for a SQL server, and one for Active Directory. And that way I will have um, a SharePoint farm running in the Azure cloud, even, but it's really a SharePoint on-premises farm because I have access to just like it was down in my server room. So it's a really neat trick to kind of um, um, run on-premises types services in the Azure cloud. So you get sort of, sort of the best of both worlds. All right, so let's let's go ahead and do this. We'll let that run, but that might take a minute. We'll go ahead and disconnect from this machine and go back to our slides. So that was the, the quick start. It took us probably a little bit longer because I was you know kind of walking through it. Um, but Microsoft Learn has all sorts of other tutorials, quick starts. Um, the next one is about creating and managing virtual machines, this time with PowerShell. So we look at the, the, the uh, tutorial for that. Again, um, this the last one was two minutes, this one's seven minutes, but similar type of thing. This one, because you're using PowerShell, is, is really neat, because what you can do is you can um, copy the PowerShell and just paste it into whatever the uh, you're using to run your PowerShell. So uh, what's neat is it's got this try it. This is part of Microsoft Learn. Let me make this big if I can. Um, which gives you another side by side so that you can walk work through the, the tutorial and be in Azure at the same time. So what this is doing with this try it in, in Microsoft Learn is it is logging into the command line interface of Azure. It's running PowerShell in my browser and it's using my Azure account to, to store the PowerShell commands and it's got a little bit of storage. The first time you do this, it'll say, hey, you need to set up a storage account to, 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 to support the uh, command line interface. And you say, yes, I wanna do that. And you choose your subscription and all that. But then once you have that set up, it makes working with the tutorial so much easier because you really can do sort of side by side where you come in here and you say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. Then I'm gonna go paste it over here or you just do the try it. So yeah, it's gonna ask me which one of these do I wanna run on? Let's see, where's my Hotmail one? There it is, Microsoft. Is that the one I want? I want my default one. There it is at the top. That's me. All right. Some of those other ones I don't have credits in. So if I had chosen the wrong directory, it would give me an error message. Hey, you don't have access. You don't have whatever. So I got to make sure I pick the one that I actually have a subscription and everything's all set up. Um, most people wouldn't have that many. Um, but yeah, so this is that Azure Cloud Shell. And it's really, really great as part of working on one of these, uh, in this case, this tutorial, where you can just now copy the commands and paste it right in there. And uh, it will execute. So yes, we want to create this. So now I'm doing another tutorial. Before we did it in the GUI, now we're doing it in PowerShell in the command line interface. And you know, you know, so what do we do there? We create a resource group. Now we want to create a um, a virtual machine so we're going to go run the powershell command and even if you don't know powershell it's you know i what i love about this is it's kind of walks you through and teaches you powershell right so the first command here was new at powershell is basically commandlets it's it's verbs and objects so new azure resource group and then some parameters right what did we what did we do up there we said we need a new resource group and we gave the name of the resource group and the location of the resource group down here we're saying we need a credential this dollar sign cred is a variable in powershell and it's going to be the result of that credential how do we create a credential you got to log in so let me go ahead and log in with my username and password 
now I've got this credential, and because it's a variable in PowerShell, I can actually type the name of the variable, and it'll spit out what it what it looks like. So it's it's the username and the password. It won't show me the password security. It just says it's a secure string. All right. So what else do we need to do? So we created the credential. And now we're going to create the new virtual machine using the new Azure VM uh, PowerShell commandlet. So we'll go ahead and copy that. We'll come over here. We'll paste that. Now, again. Sometimes these tutorials might be out of date, and sometimes I struggle when I run them. I got Google or Bing a few things. Um, in this case, it's crying that no size has been provided. There was a time when this tutorial was first out where it would assume a default size. Um, it no longer does that. So this is an issue with this tutorial that they haven't fixed yet. So what you have to do is um, actually it, did, it, did, it does you, you can ignore it. It says it was created. Um, but it used the default standard size. So just be aware, sometimes you might get, in this case, it's not really an error message. It's just an information message saying that you didn't provide the size, but I'm going to use the default size. So we're good on that. Okay. Next is connecting. So it's created the virtual machine. Um, now we're going to connect to it. So what do we do? We need to get these virtual machines IP address. Now we could cheat, go out to the portal, find that virtual machine and look at the IP address, but there is a command, uh, PowerShell command to do that as well. So let's go ahead and copy that. We'll come down here and we'll paste that in here and see what the, the IP address is. So it looks like the new machine was created at 20, uh, 85, 20, 21970. So now we're going to uh, PowerShell connect to it. Now this one I think is a mistake in the, the script because if I try to copy this and put it here, it's not, I can't um, remote MSTSE or can I? Yeah, um, from the command line interface. Now I could try to do it from my desktop. Let's see if we can do it from here, PowerShell. So I'm gonna run, I'm running PowerShell locally on my desktop. I'll bring it over here so you guys can see it. And I try to run that. And I think it also is gonna say, oh no, there it did pop up. All right, so it pops up. And there's the address. I already pre-filled it. We're going to go ahead and connect to that. And we'll type in a password. And now we're connecting to that uh, virtual machine. So again, using either the GUI or as we did in, in the uh, quick start or the uh, tutorial using PowerShell, just give you other ways of getting started using Microsoft Learn. There's a bunch, I won't go through all this, but there's, you know, it walks you through getting different images. It walks you through um, looking at different, um, uh, uh, different types of images, the different SKUs. It walks you through um, different, different image um, names, understanding the different sizes, how to resize one. So it, I, when I have my students do this, I tell them, you know, walk through all that. If you have time, get through all that and fight through it. And you know, a lot of times you gotta be careful when you try to cut and paste. You notice I might've been doing, a, um, uh, uh, I do this copy and then over here, I think I do a paste as plain text just to make sure everything comes out you know, the right way. Um, I just got rid of my, my virtual resource group. We'll see if that's going to, yeah, it's got the force parameter, so it's going to go ahead and remove the virtual machine and my resource group. Um, but sometimes if, you know, if you're retyping it, you got to make sure you get the little ticks or sometimes a, a hyphen might come over as a dash. So little things like that can, can be, can, can be annoying, but um, for the most part, it, you know, walking through following the steps, it's, it's a real nice way to learn about some of the resources that are available in Azure from Microsoft Learn. All right, so let's go and the next thing. So hopefully that was pretty easy. You're excited about using Microsoft Learn to do some of these things. I, um, I myself is very was very excited the first time I did it, and that, that that's actually a picture of me the first time I did one. <laughs> um, what about some of the other things that you can have in uh, learning? There's hands-on labs. So what we did was a little bit of kind of hands-on labs. But in, you know, you, when you get some of these, this is the Azure fundam, part of the Azure Fundamentals Learning Path. Eight hours of learning, twelve different modules. Um, what's nice is when they give you those sandboxes to work with. So let's go into this one. I'll show you what I'm talking about by a sandbox. So you can walk through here this particular one, and you'll notice that this is part of. If I scroll up and look at the URL, this is part of the Azure the AZ900 exam. Uh, exam preparation. So I think it even says it down here somewhere, right? It says this is part of the, uh, yeah, right here. This is, this is part of the um, Azure 900 um, 
exam prep. And this is what I use to, to, to prepare for the exam. You have right down here, it talks about it. So if you actually click on this in a different window, you'll see that this is one of those exam crams where it, it talks about what's on the exam, um, the different skills that are measured, ways to prepare. Online free is Microsoft Learn, Learning Pass, the one that we're in now with a couple of others. Um, there's also, you know, links to if you want to go take an, an actual class, but I've been using these um, exclusively and they've been really, really great. I've been successful passing these exams just using the Microsoft Learn materials. So in this particular one, as you walk through it, so let's go ahead and start one of these. Let's start this guy. Actually, I want to go as I look through here, you'll see there's introduction, discussion, describe, knowledge check, summary. I was looking for one. I think the sandbox is coming up in a minute where it actually shows you where you would start your sandbox. In fact, let me go back to the slides and I'll show you where the sandbox is. So this is it. So in unit three of eight, um, this particular exercise has you activate the sandbox. And so let me show you what that looks like. So when you go in there, when you get to unit three, you can say, hey, um, you know, it looks like they're using a sandbox. You notice I get one of I get 10 per day. Every user, every distinct user gets 10 sandboxes. So if I go and activate that sandbox, um, it's going to verify that I've already granted Microsoft permissions to my Azure portal account. Um, so the first time you do it, it'll pop up and say, do you give Microsoft permission? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it'll set me up with a Microsoft Learn directory with credits to do this particular exercise. And so it's really, really a nice way if you've, if you've got an account, but you don't have any credits, and you don't want your credit card getting charged use the sandbox now what's the draw the, the what's what you know what's the downside well you know depending on the exercise this one says i should be able to get it done in 59 minutes so it's only available for 59 minutes i've done other ones that are, have four hours um and you do have a, a certain number that you can use each day but you know i usually do one at lunch and you know, hour four hours that's all i really need so in this particular one now that i have that sandbox what it did behind the scenes is it changed my def my my portal to that sandbox so as i go in here and i start doing this particular exercise it says open up the azure portal so i'll open this up um, in a new window bring it over here side by side you'll see that my my directory now if i click on um, sql databases i don't have any right if i click on in fact it says no subscriptions um, if I click on uh, uh, resources, nothing, because which directory am I in? I'm in that sandbox that they just created for me and switched me to. So be careful. If you, if you start doing one of these um, hands-on labs and start working with one of their sandboxes, it will automatically switch you. So if you start going, you know, if I looked for that virtual machine we created earlier, it, I have to switch back my directory to, to see that. All right. So I'm in the Microsoft Learn Sandbox. They did that for me automatically. Now I can go through here and start doing this exercise. And again, doesn't affect my, my regular subscription at all. You know, it tells me what, go in here and do create a resource. So we'll come in here and we'll do that. We'll say, um, create resource, that's this button. And then it tells me to choose what, one of the templates, I think. Um, marketplace, Ubuntu, so let's go look for that. Right there, is that the, oh, it's a different version, so we'll put that in there. There it is. So go ahead and create, and then it walks you through, just like we did before, um, um, step by step using using the the the, the uh, but this this time using the sandbox. Oh, so there's me. You know, really excited about this free resource that Microsoft's making available from Microsoft Learn. I thought it was only documentation, but it's not. It's sandboxes. It's you know step by step. Now, what about SQL? So this is uh, you know uh, data data geek and Azure SQL. It, there, there's tutorials for that as well. So there's one for creating an Azure SQL database, the single database mode. And if you walk, we'll walk through that real quick. That walks you through getting started with a, a Azure SQL database, just like we did before. Um, again, you open up um, the portal. We'll open up the portal in a new window. What did I just try that again? Da, 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 new, let's just do this and drag this one over here and make that our new portal. And we'll type in portal just to get there quickly. There we go. And then once we have the portal, we can again go in here and this says we want to go in and oh, they wanted me to open up the sleep the, the the select SQL deployment option page. Let me copy that link 
put it over here. And that's just navigating me through. I could have clicked into SQL databases, new SQL database, but this just walks me directly to that page. So in this particular page, just like they have over here in the tutorial, there's, you know, what do I want to do? And it says it wants me to do a basic one. You know, what kind of resource? Do I want a single database? Do I want an elastic pool of databases? Do I want a database server? Um, and then there's other types. I mean, we talked about earlier, you can have database as a service, or you can have managed instances, or you can create a virtual machine and then install you know, you can actually choose an image that already has SQL Server installed, and there's a bunch of different images that if you choose will already have, you don't have to install it because it, that image already includes SQL installed on. For this tutorial, they want us to go single database. Now, by the way, if, you want, if you're wondering what the difference between those are, you can actually read more details. So this one talks about, you know, it goes up to a 100 terabyte, it's serverless computing, it's easy to manage. This one has, you know, the ability to, you know, extract and command, and then this one has backup management and that kind of thing. So depending on what you're looking for, uh, but again, we'll just do the single database following the tutorial, then it walks through and says, all right, you know, pick a subscription, pick a resource group, give it a database name, just like we did before. So if we wanted to call this one DGS2021-1, you know, we have to make sure it obeys all the rules, uh, what servers are going to go. I had already created this server earlier today, but if I, if I wanted to, I could create a new server. So, um, you know, this would be some new server. It does have to be, uh, you know, um, distinct. There's a URL associated with it, so I can't just do something that somebody probably already chose. It's got to be something like DDS2021, something like that. Okay, it's distinct. Yep, get created a server logon and a password, just like just like some of the other parameters. So I've already done that, so we won't do it again. We'll just use the one that I created earlier. Um, do I want to use the elastic pull? We had already said we didn't want that, but here's an opportunity to turn that on if I wanted it to. Um, Tutorial talks about the different compute and storage, different sizes. So maybe I don't, I don't want the two cores. Maybe I want more than that. Maybe I want it to be serverless um, or provisioned. So there's different options you can see down here. You can select different cores and all that. I think they did say to do serverless. Is that what I did on here? I'm not. I, I like to play a lot. As I walk through these tutorials, sometimes I'll go off script. So just be careful. If you go off script of the tutorial, it may not um you know work exactly so i do try to tell my students when they do these to try to stick to the script as much as possible um what else do we have to do down here additional settings security now security uh, i don't think was in this one this is another one of those things that if you're following through here there's networking and then additional settings but they add they move the tabs around a little bit right so we started off with basics we went to networking and then this one doesn't say security, but that's, so that's a change. You just have to be aware that there is security and then there's additional settings. Um, once you get to the end, you've chosen everything, you review and you create, just like we did with the virtual machines. It gives us an estimate how much it costs, um, says everything's valid, and then we can uh, create that new database. Just like I did before, I've already done one of these. So let's go look at the one I did earlier. Make that a little bit bigger. And what you can do with uh, this particular one is you can query it. So there's this nice little, uh, where, where it go? there it is, let's go back to it. Um, in the overview, you can say, I want to query this database. Let's do, 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 do where are we? Here we are. Um, am I on my database? Let me go back. Oh, I'm on the server. I need to go to the database. Let's go to the database. Do, 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 do. There we go, there's the database. Click the database. So now that I'm on the database, I can I can say, hey, um, let me see, to on this subscription, this, this, this is the server name, and I can use the query editor, which has been in preview for a long, long time. <laughs> um, but that allows me to do in my browser, log, you know, connect to the, the, uh, the server, either using the admin I set up when I first created it, or, my Active Directory Azure account, which by default is going to have admin permissions to it. And then when I log into it, I can use this. Um, there's the new one. So this is one I created earlier, but that new one just the deployment just succeeded there too. Um, not sure what did I turn that one off? It says it, it couldn't connect, but we'll try logging in. If this doesn't work, we'll, we'll try to connect to the one that I just, uh, or maybe I deleted it. Um, because yeah, this usually this shouldn't take this long. Usually, it just connects. It looks like it, I may have removed this one after I. Uh, oh, 
or is it which directory am I in? Let me check my make sure I'm in the right directory. I think I'm in the right. Yep. Okay. So I'm back in my my main directory. So that's good. Um, let's go see what's the uh, where's the one I just so here's the one I just created. Let's go to that resource. Maybe I deleted that one I did earlier. So here's the one I just created. Let's see if we can connect to that one. Try to log into it. And what's neat, like I said, is you don't have to have something like SQL Server Management Studio installed because you can do it using this browser-based query editor. So for some of my students who are just learning databases, just getting started, maybe they have a Mac, you know, whatever, I can say, hey, we'll just go into the, the query editor that's built into Azure, built, you know, and, 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 and run some queries. So in this example, we're going to go ahead and uh, look at some of the data. Now, on this one, I think I forgot to load the sample data. So the one I did earlier, there was an option in the tutorial that said load sample data, and then you could actually um, look at the different tables and run different queries. Um, if I had loaded the sample data, I could even open up saved queries. So let's see if I got any saved queries up here. There's uh, one I did earlier. Um, and then you could, you know, run, you know, select star from whatever, and it would give you the results down at the bottom. So a lot of cool features um, right inside the browser. That doesn't mean you can't use SQL Server Management Studio, right? I could still run SQL Server Management Studio and um, connect to this 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 server um, from there as well, right? So if I wanted to, I could go and get the server name. I need that. I need the uh, the username and password, and then. The one important thing when you create a SQL database in Azure is that you need to make sure that the uh, port is open, right? So if I come in here and try to connect this, oh, I'm trying to drag my SQL Server Management Studio over here if I can. There we are. So if I go and try to connect to this database server, uh, it's going to fail the first time I do it, probably because, let's do, uh, sure, we'll do this guy. Oh, let's get the right password. But if I don't have my um, port open, it looks like I already opened it. Um, yeah, so it, it did connect. Okay, yeah, don't let's see what we got there. This one, this is the one I loaded. The, so this one does have the data. But what's important is that you go to your um, server firewall and make sure that you add your client IP. So if your uh, client IP is not done, if it's not in the firewall and not allowing traffic through, you won't be able to connect to your SQL Server with a local SQL Server Management Studio. I already did that. That's why it went through. Um, but just make that's a very common thing that people do. They'll, they'll go provision a, a SQL Server database in Azure, try to connect to it, say, why isn't this connecting? I know I got my username and password right. You got to make sure you add that client IP to the firewall settings in Azure. All right. So there's a bunch more um, resources, other tutorials, you know, showing you how to create databases and SQL managed instances using PowerShell. Uh, I walk you through, like we saw earlier, using either the Cloud Shell or PowerShell installed locally. Do you get to sort of get that side by side that we talked about earlier, so you can follow the tutorial and enter the commands? It's just incredibly easy. Even a monkey could do it. So. <laughs> Other things you can create, Azure Web Apps, there's tutorials for that to deploy a website, uh, to Azure serverless computing with using the Azure App Service, tons of information on certifications, uh, de depending on your role, developer role, administrator role. We saw the AZ900 had a nice learning path. There's much learning paths for all these things. So uh, just a ton, a ton of materials. There's the one on AZ900. Again, gives you all the information you need to know about the exam. There's tidbits in, that are hidden in here um, they, announce, they usually announce these at like Ignite or some of the conferences where you, they'll have cloud skill challenges as part of Microsoft Learn. And a lot of these have free exams attached to them. So this one's been expired, but you know, be aware that you know, sometimes I'll just search for them. I'll check on Twitter. I'll announce them when I find out about them. Um, there's, a, there's a cloud skills challenge for Power Platform where we're making apps. Um, there's the Microsoft Cloud Skills Challenge from uh, the, for US-based folks. So just tons and tons of, of ways to not only prepare for exams, but a lot of times get discounted on exams. The final thing I'll mention in my last minute here is Microsoft Learn TV. I was on one of the episodes. I really had a blast doing it. Um, it's just something you can put on. You know, If you're not, not sure what you want to watch, just go to Learn TV. You click on it, and there's always something interesting on. You just you know just kind of play it in the background. So sometimes I'm sort of, I don't know what I'm interested in, but you can click on Learn TV. And this what's up next? C-sharp, combining branches and loops.
So you never know what's on the Learn TV, but I think that's a, that's a really nice, cool feature as well that they added. And you did get different people to be on there. And if you want to be on there, contact them. They, I know they love um, interviewing folks, just you know, seeing what the people are up to and what they're doing. So last thing I'll leave you with is how to get Office 365 for free, because I kind of mentioned how to get started with Azure, but there is an offer for 365 as well. It's called the Microsoft 365 Developer Program. It does ask you for a credit card, but again, it's never I've never been charged for it. 90 days, free developer sandbox. Um, you get to play with SharePoint, play with um, 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 OneDrive, you know, all the Office 365 developer stuff. You can load sample data in it to move data around. I like I love this for playing with Dataverse. If you haven't heard about Dataverse, it's Microsoft's database in the cloud that that uh, they use with dynamic CRM and things like that. And this is a great way to get get started and play with that. So you know, again, the links in the slides, you just click on that and sign up. Um, and it's free every 90 days as long as you're using it they automatically renew it and so i've had one for years it's a really great free resource with that that's my time thanks everyone if you have questions feel free to put them out in the chat i'll be on the discord later you can also tweet me at david e patrick and i'd love to you know hear your questions and and, and find out how you're finding microsoft learn and how it's helping you hopefully thanks again everyone take care i appreciate it